Pickle, let's go to the hotline. Let's go down to the Alamo City. We're pleased to be joined by the head coach of the state semifinal bound, Sybil of Steel Knights, Coach David Sines joining us. Coach, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Greg? Doing great. How are things in, in down there in San Antonio? Oh, things are good, man. Things are, you know, I know we're excited. Our community is excited. Our school is excited, uh, you know, to be playing another round. So we're all really excited about it. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm interested in that because, you know, this is a, a steel program that obviously has, has such great pedigree and such great tradition. Uh, the expectations are so high. Um, you guys go into this this regional final against Dripping Springs, uh, you know, against a, a real good Dripping Springs team that had been playing outstanding ball. What was what was your message to your guys before you headed out onto the field on on, on Saturday? Oh, it was just go out and compete. You know, you take it one play at a time. You know, and uh, you know, stay positive. You know, throughout the entire game because we knew it was going to be a battle. Uh, no, you know, anytime you play an Austin area team that's been playing that well this late in the year and you know our message was just to go out and, and try to execute the best we could in all three phases and uh you know control the things we could control and you know our, our guys did a great job of doing that on on saturday uh you guys were able to to come up with with big plays in the same way that you guys have been able to all year and especially uh through the air uh you know quarterback chad warner has has really had a great year for you guys um i'm, I'm curious to see how you've seen him grow um, not just maybe, you know, during the season, but, but since you, you first met him and, and, and kind of, uh, he took command of this offense. Yeah, he's, he's done a tremendous job. He started last year midway through that first game against Brennan and at, at the Alamo dome and the pigskin classic and just, you know, his, his, his demeanor, you know, it's just, he's always even kill. It seems like ever since we've, we've, you know, we've got to know him and work with him and, uh, you know, his composures, it's always been there and, you know, it helps to have you know, some, some really good weapons around them at the running back and the receiver position. And, you know, the O-line has done a tremendous job the entire year, you know, of protecting him and, and keeping him clean in the pocket. But, you know, just his, his awareness and, and seeing how the game has slowed down for him since his sophomore year, you know, that that's what we've seen, um, you know, the most improving on throughout the year. Speaking of, of your offensive line, um, you know, you go back to the your regional semifinal win over Harlan. Uh, for all the things you guys did well, running the ball was a struggle on on the Hawks. It was it was it was hard to do. This past week, you you got you got you got Hatton loose. You got jo you got Jonathan Hatton loose for 126 yards and a touchdown. How important was it, and how much of a focus was it for you guys to make sure you guys established the run against Dripping Springs? You know that, that that was a huge part of of our you know of our game plan going in, just knowing how how physical and how good their their defense was. You know across the board, we knew that if, you know we're going to have have success offensively. We're going to have to try to establish a run game, uh, you know, on those guys. And you know our, our offensive line did a great job of of creating you know some holes for for Jonathan and Jonathan did a great job of of you know getting you know the extra yards after contact and things like that. But uh, you know, anytime you, you get this deep in the playoffs, you know, you, you always want to try to establish a run the best you can. And, you know, our offensive line did a great job of that, you know, on Saturday. Talking to David Sines, the head coach of the Civil Steel Knights here on Texas Football Today. Get involved in the conversation, hashtag TF Today. Coach, uh, on the other side of the ball, you know, your defense has been, has, has really settled into uh, consistency, what you guys have seen, uh, you know, especially the secondary. We know the talent you guys have back there. Um, coming into the year, is this the kind of defense that you expected to be playing uh, at this point with, with the guys that you have back there? You know, we, we had a, we lost a, a really good senior class last year. And when you're looking at, you know, the losing like a Makai Williams and Javon Bejarano and guys like that, uh, we knew that we had some shoes to fill, but we knew with our D line, we had three of the four starters coming back in our D line. And those guys are, you know, they, they play with a motor and that, that helps anytime you can get, pressure with your with your front four that always helps in, in the back end whether it's secondary and then helping your linebackers you know with their run fits and things like that so um you know we we knew we had some some pieces to fill at our at our linebacker spots and a couple in the secondary we knew that uh you know that they they had the potential to 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 be a pretty good defense but you just never know until they you know you turn those friday night lights on and, and start competing but they've done a tremendous job growing each week and, and you know, getting better and better. You know, that's all you can ask as, as a coach. Speaking of getting better and better, and, and uh, let's talk about something I know coaches love to talk about, which is games you lost. Uh, let's go back to week two, and you guys uh, go to Lake Travis uh, and, and, and fight hard, and they pull away with a 20-10 to 10 win. Since then, you guys have been a runaway freight train. What, what do you feel like you, you learned or took from that week two loss that has you guys rolling now? Yeah, you play at 
Lake Travis mm-hmm. week two of the season, you know, that there's you schedule games like that. So you can find out what your weaknesses are. And, you know, we had a, I think we lost 50 seniors last year. We had four new offensive linemen that were playing. We had, I forget how many of guys on defense that, that were getting, you know, their second start of the season and you play against a really good Lake Travis team. They're going to find your weaknesses. And, you know, you know, not all losses are, are terrible as long as you learn from them. And I think as a coaching staff, we learned some things that we thought, you know, we would be able to do that we wouldn't be able to do. And I think as, you know, as, as the players play in a hostile environment that early in the year, that helped us tremendously of, of, you know, growing up, you know, our kids understood the, the situation. You want to be a, 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 you know, a state caliber team. Um, you're going to have to, to grow up in, in, you know, some of those moments, whether it's your offensive line, like linebacker, secondary, whatever it was. But, you know, that's why you schedule those games early to find out what type of football team you're going to have. You can, are they going to fight or, you know, are they going to lay down or, and, and things like that. So we knew we were going to fight for four quarters. We just had to get some things fixed, you know, schematically and, and things like that. So that, that was a huge part of, of our growing pro- uh, process throughout the year. Coach, it's on to the next one, and it's a big one. Four o'clock Saturday in Waco at McLean Stadium as you guys will take on the champions of Region 3, uh, the Humble Summer Creek Bulldogs. Uh, I don't want to ask you to reveal your entire game plan to us, but when you take a look at what you're going to be up against uh, on Saturday in Waco, uh, what do you see across the field in, in Summer Creek? Oh, I see, you know, big, strong, fast, physical, and extremely well coached. So, you know, you get to the Final Four, uh, you know, that's most of these teams are going to be, you know, extremely talented. And they're extremely well coached. And, uh, you know, that's that's what we see on our end um, when we turn that film on. And, you know, it just wouldn't expect anything less than, than a four-quarter game, you know, f- at 4 o'clock at Baylor. He's David Sines. He's the head coach of the state semifinalist Civil Seal Knights. Coach, we sure appreciate your time. Congratulations again uh, on the, all the success and best of luck on Saturday. Hey, uh, I thank you. Uh, can I, one last thing. Greg, I want to thank you guys, man. You guys do a tremendous job. For, for high school athletic, you know, football, high school athletics. And uh, I just want to say thank you guys for everything you do for, for the student athletes and for the coaches and, and bringing recognition to the game. Uh, absolutely, Coach. We sure appreciate that. Thanks for your time, Coach. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. There you go. David Sines, head coach of Civil Steel. That's very nice for him to say. He doesn't need to say that. He doesn't need it. He's a kind man. He is a kind man. He's got a, he's a good football coach, too. <laughs> and that is a – And that's a recipe for success. That's a good football team. Mm-hmm. That's a good football team. And – I don't know. That's a tough one to call. Civil Steel and, 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 and Summer Creek. Um, but I'll tell you the way like That's gonna be some big old boys on the It's gonna be field. some big old boys. Like those are massive humans. One down of the things there. that I'm interested in and, and spoiler alert for the picks video, one thing I'm interested in. Summer Creek got touched up a little bit through the air by Fort Penn Hightower. You look at the receivers, Jalen Cooper, quarterback um, Chad Warner, they can sling it a little bit. I'm very interested to see if they can, if Civil Steel is going to throw the ball pretty effectively against this Summer Creek defense. Because uh, that front seven's nasty mm-hmm. with Xavier Atkins and company. But it is a fantastic ball game there in uh, at Baylor. Uh, on, on It's actually the last game of the year, or last game of the weekend. It's 4 o'clock. It's 4 o'clock kick at Baylor. Mm-hmm. So um, that's the one we'll be waiting on here on Saturday. I should have given them grief. Tell them, dude, we're going to be waiting for your game to go final to finish all our state championship stuff. Well, the good thing I can tell you is that that game will be live on Dave Campbell's Texan Live. Whoa! You can don't watch tell it. anybody yet. I, I don't know if you know how that microphone works. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for watching that video. If you would like more and to be notified when they come out, go ahead and click that subscribe button right down there. You can also watch Texas Football Today every day live at noon on TexasFootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, and right here on YouTube. For more of the best coverage of Texas football in the Lone Star State, go to TexasFootball.com slash subscribe.